Here's some old wisdom. When in doubt, pull out. Hold on, everybody, relax. That's Whoa! Not, it's this, not what you think. This is a fitness tip? I'm wow. talking about exercise here. Tip. Look, there's training to technical failure, and then there's training to absolute failure. We do not advocate for training to absolute failure. What is that? That's when you lift the weight to the point where you can't even move it anymore. Here's what happens with that. Your form will break down, and what you train is what you strengthen. So you want bad recruitment patterns? You want higher chance of injury? Then train to absolute failure. Otherwise, train to technical failure. What does that mean? The last rep you do is the last one you feel like you could do with perfect form. That will serve you much better. So if you're going to train to failure, do it the right way. Awesome. We'll be able to monetize this one. Why? I don't understand. So, so train the like main vein, You know what I mean? Right, if you're doing guys? the set and you doubt it, you got to pull uh, up. Yeah. So, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I see. I made the connection there after, yeah. <laughs> yeah, after the fact. Oh, no. Intense D. I'm surprised Doug didn't pull the plug on no, that one. No. I tried. <laughs> he tried. <laughs> he had a button right there. Ready to go. Sometimes his yeah. morning ideas. I don't know, dude. I don't understand. <laughs> I, had I had a little bit of caffeine this morning. You know, yeah. I, uh, but I do, I do find that this is one of those things that we have to say over and over. Yeah. Um, and I, and I know that because I, I feel like I, even myself, I have a tendency to want to do that, to write, to train. I, I still, to this day, probably train to failure more than I, I need to, yeah. because there's something about that uh, addiction to wanting to feel sore or yeah. to re to take it to the limit and be like, oh, so oh, I just get consumed by the momentum, you know, of what you're doing. And, and do so you, you just and, keep going. And do you guys think it's more, do you think it's a, um, you think it's a uh, like a, a a man thing more than it is like a, a woman? Do you think? I feel like no. oh, I do. Not with I, weight, maybe with I weights. Feel, I feel like with with women, I I have you ever seen a woman do cardio to failure? I have. Oh, okay. So yeah. you're gonna use that? It's I'm just, talking okay. about weights right now. Yeah, and I think it's because guys That's typically are like I want to get big. Yeah. Right? So they do yeah, that, I always but. felt like with 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 my female clients, I always they, they were some my female clients were my most technical best form clients. Yeah. Like I have I had more women. That could perfect a beautiful squat or deadlift yeah. than I than I did a man, and and a lot of times I think or I attribute that to they were always like you they were very meticulous about the detail of the form and technique, and they would always lean on the I'd rather be light and safe and smart than to stretch myself too much, and I'd always had to kind of encourage them to oh you could do more yeah. mm -hmm. I could tell you could do more no you're With right. my men it was just like oh I could put I could put more I'm like yeah. no that first one was pretty shitty actually well, that first one was bad bro we shouldn't do it anymore well there's also like there's a bias with training uh, more women hire trainers than men do and I think it's just you know it's like that what's that old adage like you know pull over and ask for directions yeah. you don't have to do that anymore these days asking for help I mean GPS it's, yeah it's so. Not it's not but a very good mail. But trait. I look. I did this right where I would go to. I thought going to failure, and I got this from reading. Like, well, there's my studies. Mentors, there's studies duty. that support this. Yeah, and what happens is, look, fatigue is the op is literally the enemy of technique and form. Fatigue will crush. I don't care how great your technique and form is. When fatigue starts to set in, your technique is not going to be as good. That's a fact with anything that you do. Okay. So if you're going to the point where you can't move anymore, what ends up happening is that last rep or two. You're now strengthening a pattern or a movement or the way you're doing the movement in a way that's less than optimal. And then that's what you end up strengthening. That's what ends up becoming your default pattern. So if you have this slight twist, you know, I'll use an example that's that's obvious and easy to see. You're bench pressing and you do that kind of failure and the bar stuck and you're like, you're going to just keep pushing because you, you got to do that absolutely. And then your body starts to twist a little bit and you start to move a little bit and then you fail. Well, you, what you're strengthening is this twisting pressing motion, which is not proper technique or form and this is when things start to get bad yeah so. no I, I i think it's more than just that too i can't remember what i was gonna say though i was uh, gonna tell you i was <laughs> waiting for you to finish well, your fry, sentence it fries the hell out of your no no no, no it's no it's the, the problem with the studies the that the studies that support oh, failure right. training right. is not uh it's not realistic to what real life is for the average person you you take a, a six to twelve week study to prove that failure training gets x amount of growth or potential strength out of it what you're not factoring in is that the average person has these ups and downs of energy, sleep, uh, you know, hydration, proper nutrition. And it's like all these things are adding in, the, the adding in the stress bucket. Yeah. Okay. And, and when you, and training to failure is, is way more stress than just training period. Training right. period is already a stress. And then training to failure is way more stress. Right. And if you add that with somebody who is also 
lacking sleep for the last three days or they're a little bit like they didn't get their calorie intake or they're just frustrated with work that changes that outcome of that study but that's not how that study works that study is very controlled it's like oh it's short and there are athletes that already have like built a base too and so it's not like an average person like they don't have any of the prerequisites like going into like you have to build up your body quite a bit to be able to handle uh you know uh, going to that degree of intensity it's not it's not necessary it's all it's typically too much but even if you look at you look you brought those studies 12 week studies 15 week studies in the context of I want to try to work out for the rest of my life, or let's just shorten it in the context of five years. Okay. Not who decides they're going to work out for 12 weeks and then stop. I don't think anybody starts that way. Everybody that happens because people quit, but when people start, do you tell them, Oh, so you plan on totally quitting after 12, 12 weeks? They'll say, no, I want to keep doing this. So if we look at the context of how long you're going to be doing this for, uh, that kind of an all out intensity sprint will fail. It's like looking at a run and saying, run 50 yards. Well, the person who's going to do it the best is the person who's going to run the fastest and the hardest. You make that a 50 mile run. The person who tries to sprint out the gates, right? away, they're going to fall down. They're going to hurt themselves. They're not going to be able to complete the race. So it is beneficial in short bursts. If you do it properly, if you do it appropriately, if it's right for your body, there's lots of caveats here, but in the short bursts, Yeah. Just like they did that one study that showed where they took a group of people and they added volume every week. And I think it was a, I want to say a 15 week study At the end of the study, the group that did 52 sets per body part had the best results. Okay, keep doing 52 sets. Let's watch (laughs) what happens. It'll start to go backwards. It'll start to go backwards. But it was a short sprint. And this is how you should train your body. Mm -hmm. 90% of the time, you're cruising and you're training properly and you're taking care of yourself. 10% of the time, when you feel good, all the stars aligned, everything looks perfect, diet, sleep, supplements optimize recovery. adapt optimize adapt they you know you sprint there's a there's a there's a good golf analogy here like if if you've ever tried to golf with people that know how to golf and you're trying to learn how to golf a lot of times they will recommend to you to like just use like your seven iron and not use the driver mm-hmm. oh. and just and just play with that because it's a, it's an easy iron to hit and it's kind of safe there's not a lot of room for air. You're not going to crush it way left or way right like you can with a driver. Right. Driver's way Build more that consistency. Yeah, of like driver's way more technical. It. But the, nothing is going to send a, a golf ball further than a than a driver. If yeah. you hit that hard and sweet and just right, that thing will go go flying. But it's like very very technical, and your skill and you many times you'll play way better. And I've done this where I've played rounds. I'm like, I just I'm not going to play with my driver. I'm just going to play yeah. with my irons. And I'm the slightest play. hitch in your swing, and it's going to go exponentially further to the left or right. This exactly. Is how, this is and, how I beat you guys at Top Golf. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I feel this. That's, that's true. And I feel like I feel like failure player. training is like that, right? Of yeah. course, a driver in golf is necessary at the elite levels yeah. to to beat everybody else. But for the average person who is just kind of figuring the game out, playing it safe and smart, trust me, you'll probably play a lot better, get way better results, win a lot of matches just by playing smart and safe. And then over time, you will learn how to use that throttle down or use that well, driver. What's the most, I don't know golf, but what's the most used uh, iron in, in golf? Is it the driver? Like the seven. Okay. No, no, okay. The iron so is. even in them, even with them, they're not using this you know, uh, this, this, this club that blasts the ball, they're even using that in a small percentage of time. Most of the game they're using other tools. Right. Right. So it's the same thing. So that's right. That's why it's a good analogy yeah. because you, you, you obviously wouldn't use a driver. Nobody would use even a professional, but you use it at every, every, you tee off. Yeah. Almost yeah. every time, unless you have a, that's a your very, sprint. Yeah. And so again, if you, the room for air was something like that is what makes me think of that analogy. The same thing goes for failure. It's like, and you can absolutely, play your best golf that you've ever played and never use that. I feel like the same thing goes for training results. You can see incredible results and never have used training to failure. No. In fact, uh, most of my clients, I told them never to go to failure. That's, Mm -hmm. that was the the vast majority. The ones that I teach that I would taught or teach how to use failure were at a level where they, it it would be appropriate occasionally. And they Mm -hmm. had been training consistently. Their form was good. They knew how to get to technical failure and not beyond, which takes some time Applying it beforehand, before all those things, it won't get you there any faster. If anything, it'll get you there a lot slower. But again, I want to use that analogy of Top Golf when we play because that's exactly what happened. Anywhere, anywhere you can insert the you guys, I just want to remind everybody. You, know, <laughs> you guys were blasting. They don't, I just kept, you know, just a little in the, you know, the first hole. Or whatever. Yeah, we yeah. were going for the hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. the difference. I had, I had, a, I had a, a, a partner question. I know I saw that we had uh, uh, LMNT today. And yeah. I know that you have had your son using it. I try to get Max yeah. to do it. and he You just, can't put a lot. How much did you put? 
Oh, so I put like half a packet in there. No, bro. And what? In like his water. That's too little. That's like concentrate. Holy shit. So his little you, body doesn't need that. So <laughs> what, do you, what did you use? I put, so I'll take the packet and he's yeah. got a little sippy cup and I'll literally sprinkle enough to give him some of the taste and a little bit of the sun. Oh, uh, okay. You're Otherwise okay. it's way strong. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, because yeah. he's a little, little little body, dude. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's like all the Well, that's why body. I didn't think of the whole thing, obviously. But I mean, I didn't think that you're barely sprinkling anything. Oh, in yeah. There. Just, I had to, I mean, because that's what I'll do. I'll put a little, and you know what he calls it? He calls it tasty water. So he tasty says, water. hey, mom, can you give me tasty water? Uh, so we know so that. So that's why I just need to water it way down. Yeah. And maybe he won't notice. What, what, what? So does he do that still on a regular basis? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We give him just a little bit. And if, we, if we're outside in the, in the heat and in the mm. sun, um, then I'll more consistently put it. Cause you know, little, you know, three-year-olds, they'll run until they can't move anymore. Yeah. And he'll just be sweating. So I'll put a little bit. Well, of I mean, it makes sense too. Cause I know you guys are like us, like you don't do a lot of processed foods for him at all. So he's getting no. mostly whole food. No. So and we don't drink any, he doesn't drink anything except for water and occasionally that's max macadamia nut milk. Yeah. And what we'll do is his mom gets uh matcha lattes from uh starbucks mm -hmm. and he's like always wants some of it obviously mm -hmm. you're not gonna give it to him because it's got caffeine i love that i kept the juices and stuff away from him for as long as i did because now there's been times where someone's like offered it and he, he it's just way too sweet yeah mm -hmm. he'll take he gets this like weird look on his face yeah. i'm like oh it's so great even my kid will have See, some water i'm like he oh, likes it for it. two sips and he's done yeah but we do macadamia nut milk and then jessica has this like organic uh green food coloring Hmm. And she'll warm it up and, you know, warm it up in the, and then she'll put a couple drops, mix it. And he thinks it's a matcha. That is something that Max does. <laughs> so I, I know we don't have an Organifi commercial today, but that is something oh, that Max fancy. does is the green juice mm. is the, he does like the green juice. So she, Katrina makes that for him and shares it with him all the time, but I haven't got him on the, the on the element yet. Protein, protein, done protein like shakes a, are good too. Yeah. Like a, a half packet for when the kids like compete in like gymnastic yeah. tournaments and, and we'll put it in one of those like uh yeti you know like mm -hmm. so size with, with the water but it and it's great because like they're they're out there like really like rigorously competing and their bodies like uh you know definitely um benefit from when that. i was a kid working with my dad in the summers in the in the heat mixing cement and carrying the buckets and sweating like crazy i think i told you guys this before but Oftentimes, my dad would add salt to his water, and he would put something. I can't remember the name of it. It's this weird. It's alcohol. It's got alcohol in it, but it's this weird drink. I don't know what's made made of. Maybe you could look it up, Doug. I think it's spelled A N I C A. Some fermented. Uh... Uh, look up A N I C A uh, water. You know, it goes in water or something like that. He put like a few drops in the water, and we would drink it, and it was very refreshing. And then for lunch, we always had we always had some mm. kind of salty deli meat you know what else and he would always say oh i feel so good it's because of the sodium. you know what else ah. i bet he always had which i think is so interesting because i never thought about this till right now is uh i mean for, kinda. is arnica uh, it's kind of like that but it's oh. it's a n i c e or a uh, i don't know I, I would be willing to bet that more than 50 percent of all sunflower seed purchases come from contractors oh god they <laughs> crush those and little league baseball I, players yes but they I, put the whole all of them i mean that we, i when i, 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 that when I did construction, yeah, construction how funny is that it's like you you naturally just gravitate to that you know your your body is here's an example of mm. your body signaling to you it needs more salt it needs more sodium because you're working outside in the sun all the time why why else does like almost every contractor have a bag of sunflower seeds in his truck i mean that yeah. was that was or at least in that was a staple that was sure. uh, yeah in my time of like working with my dad when i was a kid like that everybody had sunflower seeds and you chewed on sunflower seeds the all it's day just long like something to do i know as well which was yeah the appeal to it for sure isn't that yeah. funny i know yeah. and it's just it's gotta be so and they, and they do they do this well i'm sure they do with you guys where they throw all one plus yeah. the seeds in there yeah yeah Delicious. Oh, yeah. I still eat them like that. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, yeah. I love them. I love yeah. sunflower seeds. I don't yeah. know how healthy they big are. Big old squirrel pouch. Uh, Speaking of big old squirrel I mean, it's a pouches. seed. It's still fat. But I, you know what? Because you you're because they're in the seed, or I mean, in the, in the shell. You're you, not over-consuming. Yeah, you're not over-consuming. Yeah. If you ate, like, already- You ever get them shelled? Yeah. Dude. Oh, yeah. You crush the whole Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just, I think that's just a good, like, same thing with pistachios. It's such a dangerous thing to eat nuts already. Like, you were meant to have to crack the shell and eat the individual yeah. one. They're so high in fat and calories that if you get b bags, that was like one of the worst things they ever did. Same thing with peanuts. Oh, yeah. Those things are dangerous. It's too you, fast. If you're just grabbing handfuls of it and throwing it in your mouth and you're not having to crack the seed, mm -hmm. just simply, I mean, talk about in, like 
learning about creating barriers for yourself to regu- self-regulate. Buy, like- buy uh, nuts that you have to shell. Yes. 100%. Huge difference. Totally. Actually, that's a tradition. Uh, that's like a traditional, one of the last courses that we'll have uh, for dinners is people will bring out nuts and they're always, and then and they'll bring out nutcrackers. Yeah. And they're always walnuts or even almonds or anything and they're in the shell and you have to crack them and eat them yourself and you eat way less. Yeah. Way less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so anyway. Today's giveaway is the super bundle. If you want to win that bundle of workout programs, do this. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We also have a sale. MAPS old time strength is half off and MAPS obstacle course racing, OCR, is also half off. If you're interested in either one, do this. Click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Uh, I have to talk about... Well, I I was going to transition this over because you know how you would just put like half the packet in in your cheeks and all that reminded me of the Jordan Peterson episode. Oh, you dick. (laughs) Bro, it looks so... A little cut over I don't know why... Hold on a second. Bro, why... Come on, you guys always make fun of my fat face. I don't understand, Adam, why our faces look so big. Oh, my God. It looked terrible. What happened? I looked like I got punched in the face. Right? <laughs> like it was swollen. Uh, what happened to us? Was it the, was so it the lighting? No, I think angle. it was. No, it wasn't the angle. You know what it was? Is is that we were traveling like crazy. We had been to London for how long? 10 days. Then we were into Florida. Then we went to Arizona. I'd been eating. Never shoot me like that again. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't never shoot you that way, man. Yeah. It wasn't me. It's always you. Hold on. It's Ju- always you. Justin, whose face, <laughs> Justin, who's, who's face looked bigger, mine or Adam's? I, that's a good question. It was like, that's the biggest I've seen. You're that or I'm going to start interviewing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so what do you think? I think your head was bigger and Adam's cheeks were bigger. Oh, my God. Oh, dude, it yeah, looks yeah. so bad. Somebody actually head. commented. Somebody yeah. wrote underneath, like, Sal's head grew a lot. <laughs> oh, wow. So we said that? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> You know, it's funny. It so the so audience obviously doesn't know this. So yesterday we, we, we saw the clip for the first time and we're like, we all, the Jordan you guys sent to us and all of us are like watching on our phones here in the studio. And I'm like, I see, I see it. I go, Oh fuck. First, I think I see, I, think, <laughs> I see Sal. I'm like, damn, Sal looks like that. Then I see me and I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> then I see Justin. I'm like, Justin looks hella good. I'm like, <laughs> I'm just pondering and, like and the whole time. Just like, mm. and no one says anything. I finally said, I was like, bro, our face is like, yeah. Sal's like, man, I'm, geez, I wasn't going to say anything, but boy, we look bad. So, man. so funny. Cause I thought I got the shaft cause I had to like sit right next to him, you know, and you guys were on the other side. Yeah, I was like, man, was, I got the worst seat. That is not my good side. Some of the clips, seat. Some of the clips that they would do, like he would be talking and we're listening and they would show us listening and we're yeah. like, I know people. You see people making fun of that too. Well, no. Yeah, yeah. People on our on our Instagram were like, "The boys when Jordan Peterson talks, and it's with the the lips emoji with the eyes. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> big eyes and just like <laughs> mm, pondering. Oh, you know. But that's the thing. You get lost. I mean, it's it's. I it, haven't even listened to it yet. Have you guys listened about to it deep yet? Subjects. Have either one of you listened to it? I listened to it's half one of the ones of it. I actually wanted to listen about to. Half of it. Mm-hmm. You did? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I like listening. I mean, the guys. I always like listening to stuff. Yes. I mean, obviously, it's aired, so we can talk about it now, but. I mean, like I, everybody wanted to know after I, I interviewed him, like that her family friend, oh my God, what was this and that? I said, you know, it was awesome. It was a milestone for us because it was somebody who we all really wanted to interview. Uh, I don't think there was anything he said that I haven't heard him say already, but the comment about uh, Twitter, when I yeah. asked him about yeah. Uh, yeah. Elon, media. Elon Musk and, and taking over Twitter, and if you thought, yeah. that kind of blew my mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. His take on he basically said he doesn't think there's a way to make it. It's not salvageable, so that it doesn't. You know, it's not toxic. Yeah. He says it's impossible. I, I just, I never ra- like. Uh, there's a lot of stuff right now, right, left or right. You know, uh, the 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 left is censoring this. All oh, the right, there's all these crazy people on there. It's like there's, you know, we're dividing everybody, and it's it's the other side's fault why this these media platforms are awful. And the truth is, after listening to him it talk, it might be toxic to human behavior. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It de- like like it do- it doesn't matter if the, the the most balanced right to left neutral person controls this thing. Mm-mm. It's set up for failure. It's yeah. set up in a way that doesn't mirror the way we interact it socially out, and how we evolve. It takes out the natural it checks highlights and balances. narcissist psychopaths. That, well, because that's what it does. It, yeah. it, it, in it gives the real, them a louder voice. In the real world. Did that blow anybody else's mind? I mean, that blew, that, of did. all the things he said, I, I that was like, oh, I oh no, know why I never thought of that. 100%. In the way he explained it, it was perfect because the real world has built-in checks and balances. Yes. Because those don't exist on social media platforms, there's nothing you could do. Because in the real world, you would never walk up to strangers and comment on something that they said no. in a way that could get you punched in the face or cause 
some kind of whatever. You're not right. anom uh, anonymous. And psychopaths are much easier to pick out when you inter you know, you exchange ideas with them and talk with them yeah. in real life. It's harder on the internet. And not only that, and even if you started to sense that, you would disassociate. That's right. Mm -hmm. So you, they wouldn't even be allowed to be in the circle to even comment and say anything like that. So it really just... Or how many times has this happened to you in real life? Never. Right. Where somebody walks up to you and goes, hey... What's your opinion on this thing? You're like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> hey, everybody, he doesn't ha he doesn't want to say anything. Yeah. Screw this guy. He's bad. I worked in a bar for years, right? Like the the biggest thing was like you don't bring up politics, you don't bring up religion, you don't bring up death. Like there's just certain things that you're just like you don't talk about that socially and engage in that because it just creates conflict and everybody has a terrible time. Yeah. And everybody knows that. Yeah. And this this like new sort of way that people like talk and interact with each other is just like bullshit. Yeah. It is, and it highlights um, a lot of insanity. Speaking of which, um, the mo I've, I have to say, probably the most epic interview I've ever seen in my entire life was Elon in his interview with uh, the New York Times. Yeah, yeah. yes. I, he is, he, I, I don't know the guy. I don't know the man, okay? Who's a refreshing... But damn, I love him. I mean, to say <laughs> what he said, to stand by his yeah. principle, literally he said... Oh, they want to blackmail me for money? Go fuck yourself. He goes, says, go fuck yourself. And the, the my favorite part you is the reporter. Pinch, oh, bro, it was so awkward The in reporter there. froze, and then he literally looks at the audience, and he clarifies, go fuck yourself, yeah, bro. Yeah. If, if somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> is that clear? I hope it is. Hey, Bob, if you're in the audience. Is I was dying. Yeah, Bob, I know you're out there. <laughs> yeah, I was dying. And he made a very good point. That, oh, yeah. There's another thing that he said that I think got overshadowed by that, that I think is even more important. He said, more people want to look like they're doing good and do evil than actually do good. And to yes. those people, I say, fuck you. Yeah. yeah. And I love that, man. You, we, need, it, we need people who stand by principle, especially people with influence and power. Mm -hmm. Well, he, he is the reason why I asked that question uh, to Peter. In fact, I believe I framed it that way of like, hey, now that Elon Musk is taking over Twitter, yeah. do you have, you know, and I and up until that point, I did have some uh, belief that, oh, man, I think if someone could make, make this a better platform, it's yeah. going to be Elon and I think it'll be great. And I'm on that side of like it being better than what it was before. Of course, I know that there's half this audience that think this probably disagrees with that. But now I don't even I don't agree with that. I don't think it's possible. I think after what the points that Jordan made, yeah. I think that it, and it, to me, what that highlighted was it was just more confirmation of why I need to be on it less. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that it's it no yeah. matter what it's worthless. You can you can try and uh, you know, we talked about this the other day about the algorithm feed the algorithm better stuff. And it's like at the end of the day, you just can't control the toxicity on this thing because it doesn't you can mitigate it, but it ain't gonna Yeah, be, yeah, you can make it a little bit better. But it's still it's yeah. still an awful place because of those reasons. It I, doesn't have the natural checks and balances. So. Yeah, I agree. And, and what's the the to go back to that interview? What's crazy is that first of all, the way he positions certain things. So he doesn't bow down to these massive corporations. He says, "Screw you." He calls out Bob by name, and then he says, "We'll let Earth decide. We'll let people decide. They'll be the judge." And and he said, "Well, what what'll happen to X?" And he goes, "It'll fail. It'll bankrupt, and it'll be because of them." And he goes, "And, and the and the, the world will decide who's right here." Have you guys seen what's happened since then? Mm -mm. There's been thousands of people who have been posting that they're canceling their subscription services to these platforms. <clears throat> Disney, Paramount, to, you know, they're, they're basically putting out and saying, we're going to boycott these companies because we yeah. support what you're doing. Well, I saw some crazy uh, business owners, uh, was that Cardone? Yeah. Who, who was like, yeah, I'm going to... Uh, actively sponsor and like add like for ad money into to Twitter to, to support you know this this sort of movie. Obviously a disconnect there. So because I saw I saw the response right to that, and it sounds like or what he said was that his the the t t X was trying to tell Cardone that they didn't think that his content would do well on there because oh. of other sponsors, and so. Um, it sounds like he's tried to to advertise with them. So even, I mean, that's the hard part about a massive company like that. Even Elon, who has his vision for it of what he wants to do, there's still people underneath there so that are running it. Yeah, yeah that are running these these day to day operations that he's probably like ten people disconnected from yeah. that doesn't even know that they're I, turning down. I stuff I, like that. I I'm thankful for uh, him buying X because um, it was it's this is by it's not controversial anymore. It's clear we know this. Uh, these social media platforms are being told what they should and shouldn't center, what censor, what they should 
shouldn't allow. There's narratives that are pushed for sure. By the way, I'm not an expert in, in most fields, but I will consider myself pretty damn knowledgeable about fitness and health. And I will say this, lots of disinformation and misinformation is put out on social media platforms. And it's obviously a narrative. They're obviously doing it for a reason and it's not to make you healthier. So I can't, it's, it's not hard for me to imagine it's happening in other arenas. And then again, we have evidence. The Twitter file showed that the yeah. FBI, CIA came in said, no, you're doing this, do that, censor these people, put these people forward. There was definitely a slant in one direction. So just for balance sake, I'm glad that he he bought that. Otherwise, it's like one narrative and that's it. You and see YouTube already doing that with like all the medical advice has to come from MDs. It can't, all, it can't all, come from any alternative source. The algorithm will now put alternative medicine at the bottom. Yeah. So you look up information on anything that is regarding health and if it's considered Instead of letting the consumer like figure all that out for themselves. Like yeah. It's like we got big daddy coming in to mm. scrub everything for Let us. Me, here's why that pisses me off. There's a lot of crap <clears throat> in alternative medicine. There's also a lot of crap in accepted, you know, uh, you know, establishment Western medicine as well. Okay. But I'll just give you an example. Um, I, I remember when... I used to own, I owned a studio, a wellness studio a long time for a long time. So I started it when I was 24 or five. So we're talking over tw almost 20 years ago. And I had somebody in there that was very on the cutting edge of wellness. Okay. And she used to talk about leaky gut syndrome. And I trained doctors who would come in and when she wasn't looking Scoff and not around, it. they would look at me and go, oh, they would roll their eyes and go, this mumbo jumbo, yeah. woo hoo crap. It's going to hurt people. It's bullshit. What the hell is leaky gut syndrome? There's no such thing. Making fun of this term. Well, Western medicine now, later, they call it, um, you know, intestinal wall hyperpermeability because it's a real thing. They made fun of food intolerances. If you brought up the microbiome 25 years ago, okay, uh, Paul Check would do this. Actually, he did this 30 years ago. He would talk about the microbiome, how important the microbiome is. He would get laughed out of rooms. Doctors called him a quack. Don't listen to him. He's going to hurt you. And he'd say, no, antibiotics are harming your microbiome. That's not good for you. And they said, you're stupid. That's dumb. That was alternative medicine. Okay. So yep. without all this information, the good and the bad, we're going to, we're going to end up figuring things out way too late, you yep. know? So we need that. And them being like only the official approved, you know, by the, whatever agency information is what we're going to put out there. Like you're going to set yourself up for, for some the WHO did a great job. <laughs> so, so yeah, far. Dude. Uh, yeah. Have Terrible. you guys heard the, uh, you guys heard the rumors about Mark Cuban might be putting his hat in the ring for, uh, running for president. No way. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. I don't know if it's Andrew. Did you hear that at all? Did you know, did you see what he just did? No, I just saw that he sold most of his shares from. Yes, he sold, he's, and that's the reason. So the rumor is that's why he's he needs why the he, money. So he's yeah, he sold he sold uh, his majority shares. But by the way, take a shot and guess. May, look it up for me so I can get the year because I don't know what year he purchased the Mavericks. He's had them for a while now. I think he's had them for about a decade. Um, guess how much he bought them for, and guess how much he just uh, sold them for. Zero idea. Not even a guess. I don't even, <laughs> even know yeah, even what they guess. cost. He bought it in two thousand. Oh, he bought it in 2000. He, he bought, bought it for a hundred something million. And now he sold it for a billion. So 285. Correct. Right. To 3.5 billion. Wow. 3.5 billion. Wow. Yes. Whew. Wow. I did not see that. Isn't that crazy? Wow, yeah. I, I tell you what, I don't look <clears throat> anybody running for president is already a bit of a self-selection bias for probably a bit of a psychopathic narcissist. However, I would, I think if you were to just compare consistently over time, I think a self-made billionaire is probably going to do a better job than a career politician. Uh, come on, uh, yeah. serious? Yeah, I know. I, I don't think that's close. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to be politically correct. Yeah, here. I don't, come on, dude. I mean, I, I think career politicians. I mean, I'm not even a fan. I'm not the biggest. I, I actually, I like Mark Cuban for a lot. Of, I like Mark Cuban for a lot of his business and uh, basketball uh, wisdom and stuff like that. I'm not a big fan of some of his ideas, but still. I'm I'm more pro him than a lot of the other candidates that we've seen that we've like seen somebody about. who's had to work in the business world, yes. who's had to build companies, self made, mm -hmm. yeah, who has to deal with profit and loss, pissing people I've always, off. I've, people, I've, I've, I've know, been a, I was a Ross yeah. Perot fan, dude. Yeah, I mean, I just I do you I, remember? <laughs> do you remember his campaign? We, <laughs> yeah, you were young, dude. Yeah, I was young, but you, I do remember. I remember having enough wisdom that like, man, why the. America is like a giant business. Shouldn't we have like a really good business yeah. person in mind? Dude, he, he, he went, took a lot of the vote, right? He, like, he, he actually gave, he, they, 
you know, of course, one side says he's the reason why the other side won. Of course. But I remember third party he put out commercials that. that he funded himself mm -hmm. and he'd have these big charts. Yeah. And he was educating the public. I remember. Yeah. And I remember as a kid watching this going, huh. I like this guy. Yeah, what was it where he that's had a exactly. full infomercial that he just like stopped? It that's like, what attracted me. I, I remember him breaking breaking yeah. down. Here's our the budget. Here's how much we spend yes. here. How's how much we have? And I'm yep. like, man, I never seen anyone do yeah, that. That's like makes a, that makes a lot of sense. We should run the country this way. I'm like, I like this guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that's all I had to stand just on. Just to right? see know. like six times now that you know the intelligence agency failed their audit. But like, the, come on. There's also like, more to take, to that. Like in order to be to, in order to reach the level of financial success as like a Mark Cuban, um, with that many companies, with that many employees, the the like leadership. That's that's a that's, that's leadership. Right. You've and, proven it. Yeah, and that's you a didn't, and you didn't get put into it and you all now you're a senator. Like you like you had to build it, you had to create it, you had to navigate the hard times, the good times, the like the the, the when people want tons of money from you, working with people you don't like to work with. I mean, God, there's so many you have to build attributes. You set. have to make deals, yeah. you have to build bridges to work with people and, yeah. and then figure out how to outmaneuver them and work with different markets and work internationally. Right. Uh, Mark Cuban, Elon Musk, like, uh, you know, these billionaires that are self-made, they've worked bet more deals internationally than any of these politicians just through business. They've had to go work in all these other countries to build businesses. I would imagine there's a little bit of uh, less enticement in terms of being persuaded by money from outside influences too, right? Well, just that's like Elon's point, right? Like, yeah. you're going to try and bribe me with if money? You're trying to bribe? Like, <laughs> fuck off, richest man alive. Career politicians, <laughs> that's how they make money. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody did a post. I have one less billion now. <laughs> <laughs> Someone did a post where, they, by the way, do you, always, you guys know he lives like, apparently he just doesn't, he lives very- Doesn't beautiful. have a home. He's always moving around and sleeping. Yeah, in people's yeah. Eyes. I've read that. Yeah, is yeah. that real? Yeah, no. I, it, I told you in his book. Yeah. In his book, I told you guys about his car, right? Remember that was like his first like big purchase, and then after that, like he really. I think he. I think I remember reading that he he bought a big home at one point. And then I think he sold it, and then since then he's been like kind of. Well, I have a personal sort of story of that, and it's one of my clients that actually she went from I think it was Apple over to Tesla and started working for Tesla, and she was working there at the plant, and they just opened the plant here in the Silicon Valley. And it, in order to launch it, like he literally was there all, all day I heard, long. I've heard that too, like living there. And then there. Sli yeah. slept in the office for like months. Just he was in, everybody knew he was in there and he was just there sleeping just to, to make sure it, like everything went according to plan. Do you guys remember the movie Gladiator where, um, I don't remember, what's it, Russell, Russell Crowe? Crow? He was like the, the general, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the emperor feared him. Yeah. Because the soldiers had yeah, the influence over all the people. They saw him mm -hmm. put himself out in the line and they saw him doing like that's a that's what a good leader does. And these career politicians yeah. are just fake. It's funny though because They're we so fake. because we, have we, we, we demonize billionaires so much now that I actually think that more people hate billionaires more than they hate politicians. It's crazy to me. You know that? It's I mean, you, you know why you it's not, crazy? Does it not feel like that sentiment? Of course. Like you know, there'll be people that just because we're talking about the idea of effective propaganda. Cuban or Elon running, that it's going to piss off half the Here's audience. Here's how like, annoying it is to me. Okay, there's. I'll give you a good example. People rarely demonize a super rich celebrity, like uh, you know, like a musician or something like that. Nobody ever says, "Oh, Beyonce." <laughs> She made, you know, a hundred million dollars. One of her dancers only made forty thousand. That's not fair. How dare they? Because they look at her, they go, She's talented, she deserves it. You know, uh LeBron James. Oh, nobody complains about necessarily the money. But a billionaire, they don't see what they do. Someone who builds a business and they get painted as this evil person. If you're self made and you work in the market, you like that's that's some accolades. And by the way, you got your money. Because you gave consumers what they wanted. You've built something that and, people and have And by valued. the way, too, you can all, in the same breath, I can say all those things and then turn around and also say, like, listen, I don't know the guy. He could be an asshole. Totally. He could be all these things. I'm not saying let him babysit your kids. That's right. That's I'm, what I'm you're right. <laughs> I, that's uh, like, it's literally yeah. for me, it's like I'm making the argument that he's better than a lot of other people that we've put probably in that position. To run, to yeah. run a business. Yes. Or to run a country. To run America. You know what that's I'm saying? Right. So that's, uh, I'm not, I'm not saying, because then people always try, which I also can't stand too, which is to like come after the character. Oh, he's this and he's a bad he's a bad guy 
guy and he's an asshole and he's this and blah blah. And he does this to his workers and it's like, oh, okay, see, this show is me what... these angels that are going to run the country. No, these, these perfect humans that exist. Well, that's it. I always want the example of you're so angry with this person. Where's the other example? <laughs> it's, it's really bad. <laughs> yeah. I know. Well, yeah. it's the the smooth talkers that like. I mean, that's the, they they get away with all of you know. Like I that's a, I tell you what that's my like where I'm like look at Vivek. He reminds me so much of Obama. Like he's just so well spoken. Yeah, but he did. Build you can't some, help but like him. He did build he's some saying, companies. He's like though. he's so likable. Well, so I'm going to say this. Okay, yeah. now I'm going to say that because that's. I'm so glad you said that. This is also important. That in order to run the country, here's the difference between that and being a entrepreneur business person. You also have to be able to sell your ideas on a national stage. To everybody. Yeah. Right. Okay. Where is when you're a business owner, I mean, you, you have your employees, yes, but they get paid. They get a paycheck. As long as they're getting paid well, they like their job, like you're doing pretty good. But you don't have to get up and sell to other companies and other people <laughs> mm -hmm. to follow you necessarily. So right. like Trump, for example, was terrible at this. Yeah. You know, after the George Floyd riots and all stuff, he gets up and says the exact opposite of what he should have said, yeah. even though he's saying what's on his mind, like you, you know, you loot, we shoot. Like, what are you doing, bro? Everybody's pissed off and, and agitated. You need to bring people together. Yeah. So to be a good president, you need to have that skill of an entrepreneur. This is why, also, and you also have to be able to sell the ideas. Very this is well. why, like Elon, might not be a good example because that's yeah. he's not. He the, says, Go fuck yourself. He has, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he has that. But he has He'll get that. It done, but he doesn't have. You know, like something a about those like brilliant people like him, Steve Jobs, yeah. like that they have a bit of that. Like, I mean, obviously they have that narcissism where they're. And they're so brilliant, they can back it yeah. up. That's why they get enough people to get behind them. Like, hey, listen, he fuck, this guy does know. We should yeah. just fall in line. But that doesn't work on on a, on a national level. Yeah. Or you got to, to your point, you've still got to be able to sell your ideas. Yeah. I think, and that's an example. But some of the best examples of people that, whether you like these people <clears throat> or not, who are able to sell their ideas well. Obama, obviously, exceptional communicator. Bill Clinton, exceptional communicator. Ronald Reagan, probably the greatest. Ronald See, the, the greatest I think like the like the the yep. like superpower w or would be ideal be having one of them as president, one of them as VP. You put the president who's the most like like you put the Obama, the Vivek, yeah, the, the mouthpiece, the, and then yeah, the, in the presidency. Yeah, here's what we're gonna do. And then you, got, then you got Elon Musk as a VP, <laughs> or you got Mark Cuban <laughs> yeah. as a VP. Like to me, that is like yeah. you got the guy who can go out there and present and is likable and can communicate really well, right? Yeah. And then you have the dude that's behind the scenes. That's that, like, like you and your wife. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. When we do our sponsorship deals, yes. Adam is like, tell him to fuck right up. Put it in nicer words. Yeah. yeah. Gonna... <laughs> I mean, it's such a, I think Adam it's such like a, to re it's a great yeah. way. Hey, it's a great way to oper operate right. a business, right? It's a great you example. Lean into each other's strengths. I think together they, they, they balance each other out. It's like, I don't understand why we all, as we don't want that as a country to, to, to try and piece that together. It's like, well, I don't think most people don't think too much about it. They see the clips, they make up their decision, they get pissed yeah. off. And then right. it's easier to piss people off to not vote for someone than it is to get people to really like somebody. It's so emotionally volatile. Yeah, right and now. that's just that's just human behavior. Yeah, by the yeah. way, by the way, you know, uh, government was not you were never supposed to have career politicians. <clears throat> it was it was literally supposed to be a part time job. Mm -hmm. You had your regular job, and then you volunteered into this thing because you felt compelled to serve. You now know, it's different. Speaking of billionaires, <clears throat> I had brought I brought up on the show I think when this happened, and so I don't remember how long ago it was, and maybe the the guys can fact check with the time. But do you guys remember when I brought up Jay Z becoming a billionaire? Do you yeah. remember when that like yeah. that was a big deal, right? Yeah, like yeah. like rapper becomes a, a billionaire. I mean, I believe him and Dre were right back to back right around yes. the same time. Yep. Uh, I think Dre beat him because of the big sale of beats, and then right afterwards, Jay Z became a billionaire. He's already crossed over the two. I think he's worth two point three. Wow. And that the, so Dang. his whole life took him all the way to get to uh you know a billion dollars and then just in the last couple of years has doubled that it's so like wow. fascinating to me and also highlights Did the, you just start acquiring a lot of other businesses you know I don't the... I don't I haven't like read his biography or anything to know like how I know he's got a lot of companies right I mean and that's a, a quick way it's got to be so weird to deal in numbers that big you know what I mean like yeah you're like okay I'm gonna start this new venture that's gonna cost 50 million dollars you know yeah. what I mean? That's just it's the, a lot the, of management. It's, yeah, it's just crazy the, the numbers that they. Deal I with. mean, it, it's still. I'm so I'm so interested in it. And I think it's so incredible. And and again, it's another one of those things that people uh, right away. Oh, you're a billionaire. Oh, it's so easy when you have all this money. It's oh, it's like you know, it's like oh, you could just you could buy your way to to success. It's like it's people who like, say take steroids, you get in the NFL. Yeah, look at dude, two point yeah. five billion now. Wow. Oh yeah, look at so yeah, what happened? Impressive. His first billion was in two thousand. So from two thousand nine, it took him his whole life. To get to in 2019 to get to a so it was when I remember bringing this up a billion dollars and now he's more he's more than one and a half times that that's 
two point five billion now. It's harder. Hmm. People, this is people won't get this. It's harder to go from a hundred million to a billion than it would be to go from, you know, a million to a hundred million or whatever. Uh, it's harder to get to that. Num- when you get to those numbers, it becomes exponentially more challenging because the moving there's so many different moving parts and what's going on and. It's uh, it's challenge. That's why there's so few, so few people who who achieve that, you know, that level. Yeah, of, I mean, of, I just, I, I don't know. I, how many billionaires are there uh, in America, Doug? Do you can you I, look that up? I feel up? like it's increased over the. Uh, oh, it has. The last, few you know, years. that one a billionaire was made every single day in the COVID. In the wow. yeah. during COVID, a billionaire was made they every all day. for Pfizer. The disparity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> a lot of them did. Look at, look at, look at it. You know, <laughs> like it's, it's there's some truth there. Yeah. 735 in the US. Wow. That's you know what's crazy about that is you could take every billionaire in America <clears throat> and put them in a room. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's it's how few there are. A small, yeah. relatively small room. Yeah, it's like my that's like my Christmas party. That's how many family members came to my Christmas party. Well, I was just watching some random show and it was like this guy, his whole business is designing and building like these ridiculous yachts that are like, you know, oh, yeah. gajillions of dollars. And he's like Okay, so I have like a very small community. I'm like advertise. He's like, I'm not. I don't have a website. You know, I don't have like. He has nothing. It's just literally word of mouth. Because I know everybody, and it's like it's a very small group of people. He already knows. You, you know what trips me out is like. So you bring up a number like that, right? And, and obviously the the amount of you know uh, centimillionaires and decamillionaires are are more a lot, but more. but not crazy. It's still a, still when you talk about the. Gen- and yet we can go to places, uh, you know, you can go to these places where there's, you know, a car event or something like that. Like the one, the big one that happens every year down in uh, uh, Carmel area. And it, I look around, I'm like, where is all this money? Like, how did, how did this many people yeah. have that? Could, but I think it really highlights the amount of people that really probably shouldn't do that, but have, do that to look that oh, way. Oh, I see what you're saying. You know, and and I shared with you guys. You guys saw the Ramsey post that yeah, I shared. Yeah, the top with. vehicles. Uh, yeah, that's right. I know. What was that, number one? Toyota. Toyota. Yeah, Toyota, <laughs> Honda. Honda like, um, the most Ford purchased vehicles. Was number three, yeah. I think, and uh, yeah, it was just like your regular uh, economy kind of cars. Yeah, only only one real luxury on there was the BMW. Have you guys ever, by the way, have you ever been on one of those yachts? Have you guys ever been on one? No, not uh-uh. a super yacht. I would, I've I been would on a yacht either. before, but not a super yacht. Like how yacht. big? Was it like a... Uh, I don't know how many foot it was. I actually had a, a ex-girlfriend whose dad bought, uh, bought it used. Um, and he was a, he was a lawyer. But it was a big, was it, I mean, it was oh, yeah, it was a, a kitchen, the whole deal? Yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah. was like, you know. And he's like a full staff. It was, all, it was nothing like what, it's like, I've never been on like a crazy super yacht. Like not as, not a super God, yacht. that would be crazy to get on one of those. Somebody have helicopter pads, you could drive your boat up in there, they have all kinds of. Yeah, I used to, uh, I used to have a, a thing that I subscribed to that had like all the. All the, of all, the, you did. all the all the all the riches. magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was. I forgot what it was called, but it was like the, you actually. It was kind of cool because you could actually yacht see digest. every every. <laughs> it had every billionaire's net worth that had a yacht, so you could I could flip through it. There'd be a picture. Did of, you have trading cards with them? No. <laughs> you liar. No. Yachts and hoes. <laughs> Doug, why don't you back me up? I know he you has billionaire like trading too. cards. Doug probably had something like this too. <laughs> I mean, there is the Rob report. I don't know if that's similar to that, but they have all the luxury items. Oh, see, what's that? What's the? It's what's a magazine. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, it's online now. I think. Yeah, this mostly, was a specifically a yacht magazine. Oh, I, I, I and, didn't and know brilliant that. by the, the 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 company, right? Whoever or whoever it was that created this, because it had like every billionaire and their net worth. Like, I mean, yeah. think about it. If you're if you're like that snobby rich guy who's yeah, got yeah. the billions of dollars or hundreds of millions of dollars, and you have to flip through this magazine and see like all the other ones, you, you know that like gets the competitive <laughs> juices. Your yeah. Oh, Ooh, God, get this you just one. got that. Yeah, yeah. What's <laughs> what's the most lavish, crazy thing you would you would actually? I mean, I wouldn't do that. I don't think I'd ever own a massive. No, it'd be a waste of money for me. But what's the most crazy lavish thing that you would spend? Like if you were, let's if you had a billion dollars, what would be the craziest thing that you guys would? A it's car garage, like a like, car garage. Yeah, I'm so I'm so into cars that it would be a it would be a, like my dream, like Jay Lono, uh, yes. Jay Leno yeah, style. Like, yeah, yes, cool. uh, Leno, uh, Seinfeld, yeah. like I the those well, like guys. the rotating turntable. I just I love I love to drive. I have mm-hmm. I love all types. I love off road cool stuff. I love super fast exotic yeah. stuff. I like old school muscle. I like cars. Yeah, that sounds cool. And I'd so be... to have that like. Uh, that would be a, a total, I know, waste of money, but I would yeah. have, you know, say 50. I wouldn't need the hundreds, but 50 of my favorite cars mm-hmm. that are getting maintained, 
that I could drive anyone whenever I want, and they're always, they're always clean, they're always taken care of. That would be cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. I would love that. That'd be cool. I, I was thinking I would buy a sports team myself, like a football team. That would be cool too. Yeah, and and then just you know you, you show up, you got your own penthouse, whatever. Like you get to of like, course you would be well, a I mean, part of like now the, would you now knowing you you hire a head coach of course would yeah, you yeah. be able to would you be able to not go in there and like be like you be like Al Davis oh no I'm I'm in there you I'm in there listening I'm I'm not like. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. You hire the person that you believe in, and yeah. that's that's always yeah, so. You would make an amazing football. Team oh, coach. I would love it, dude. That I, that actually would be. <laughs> I mean, obviously, that'd be way more fun than actually coaching. Yeah. Like, that's a lot more work. Oh, I'd know? rather be the owner. The owner would be owner way more fun. Way more fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Making wow. the moves. I, I think that would be a really take pictures. Of everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I think I would. I would have. I would have. Uh, I would just have lots of. I would have services. Like, yeah. So yes, I'd have yeah, a yeah, chef. Yeah, I know you. And I would have a driver. I would, yeah. I I imagine you you would pay for this, right? I could I could see you having like, all the, the the quiet assistant who doesn't even talk and she just follows you around yeah. all day long with yeah. her little Picks notebook. Up my garbage. Yeah, your little <laughs> notebook. So every time you have ideas yeah. or things you want to remember, yeah. she writes it down for yeah. you. Doesn't say anything. Just yeah. Shh, yeah. puts it down. I don't there. know. Sal, Sal, we, in five minutes we need to be yeah. here. That's yeah. the only time Mem she speaks up yeah. is the reminder. Remember, Sal, you. your wife said take out the yeah. garbage. Yeah, yeah. Do that right now. Oh, thank you. Like the Incredibles was that one that makes all the outfits for everybody. Yeah, she's just you know. Yeah. Or a bo I would love. I think having a bodyguard would be pretty sick. Think about how awesome that would be. <laughs> a bodyguard. Yeah, yeah. Did I share that? Imagine video? that a dude that's that could fight. It's Jack that will that will literally. It's literally your dude that will like. You can just say, did you see that viral video? You know yeah. Sometimes you need a hug. He's right there. He's, did oh, you see that, it? Maybe no, Andrew because Andrew probably follows that stuff. Did you see that viral video of that kid's bodyguard who knocked out that? Yeah, one that dude? was bad, dude. Yeah. Did you? I'm gonna, I, fuck, I don't that know was what disturbing. the rapper's name is. But it's a young rapper. It's basically his friends or his bodyguards. And this fan, fan came up to him. There's a video of it on Twitter. Yeah, he, yeah, boy, he yeah, just, like, like three times his size and just oh, he you need laid into him. We also like, don't know the rest of the story so though, necessary. too, right? Like, I mean, for all you know, that that kid was spitting on the dude and acting stupid before. You gotta know, you gotta use jujitsu, man. Like, like punching someone, you could you could kill someone. Jiu-jitsu, you submit him, you know what I mean? Put him down, hold him down, and that's it. Well, what even then, yeah, you knock him out like that. If his head hits the cement, I want to. I, I know someone. That, that, <coughs> I want to know. Yeah. I want to know what Doug would spend his money on. What do you? What are you blowing <laughs> your money on, dude? I mean, for me, it's just the house. I oh, just, crazy I would just custom house. Just very custom. All the details. I mean, I, I like wood. I like stone. Uh, I just, I'd go to the nth degree. You on wouldn't that. have like a sleeping chamber, like where you come out. Oh yeah, yeah. It opens up and you're definitely. Yeah. I, I hang from the raft. <laughs> I don't know. So. I don't think. I don't think you can count that because I think that we all would. That to me, that's a that's your home, right? So this is like you already you have fu money. You already bought and built yeah, your perfect house. Yeah, it can't house. be a house. What else? It's gotta be something you're blowing it on, like a super yacht, like a car, yeah. a garage full of a hundred cars. I mean, if you're a, like a, a, person hell, a walks, helicopter, a person who walks okay, around behind you. you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. these are like. I'm pretty sure if Sal's got that, he's got a nice custom house. <laughs> so I should, I should hope so at that point. If you're gonna force me to spend money like yeah, that, yeah, right? yeah bro you gotta blow I, it i'd have an airplane i would have a jet oh, okay uh oh. because i like to travel oh, yeah, and okay. uh it would be fantastic just to be able to go down to the airport much and, better answer yeah that's so, a good idea that's what i do that the only is. thing i don't like about private jets those are the ones that was crash man every time somebody dies in a plane crash it's always a small it's always a private jet. is that true is that because mm. that... they're small yeah mm -hmm. small planes are well, did are... i say i was gonna get a small one oh, my God. <laughs> Doug, <laughs> air Doug. force one yeah. What's, what was the side? What the one that we we flew out to London? That's the biggest commercial plane. What was that? What kind of model? Oh, that was the Airbus. Yeah, that, the Airbus. That, it's that like, like a double an Airbus. That's what that thing do. was crazy, man. Yeah. That thing yeah. was massive. What's cool about those is like the ride is so smooth. They're so oh, massive. Man, yeah. It's like a ship, like a right. big ship in the ocean. Yeah, they don't feel nothing. You, you know, it's funny because. Uh, Logically, you would think that the the smaller plane would be safer, and this big, massive, heavy thing with lots of people yeah. it would have more risk. It doesn't make sense that that thing can be in the air, isn't it? It's, but that, I don't even like to think about that, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I start thinking about this thing going up in the air and staying up there. I I, I start to freak <laughs> myself but out. But it's actually it safer, really right? Crazy, the bigger the yes. bigger the bigger they are, the almost the safer they they are, right? Yep. yep, yep. But and the, the design. Did you know that the wings on that? I hope I get this right. They go 15 feet up and down. That's how much they flex. Yeah. Yeah. That's at the ends. That's how big they are. That's wild. Yeah. I mean, 15 feet. Yeah. You know, a uh, test pilot wow. for Boeing barrel rolled, I think it was a 727 back in the day over Lake Washington. Up Intentionally? In, in the Seattle area. 
Uh, intentionally, yeah. Now, 727 is a lot smaller than the one we were on. Yeah, much smaller. Yeah. But that's still a big place. But yeah, he was doing a demo. I think it was uh, there was a crowd. Wow. And nobody anticipated this. And this dude just decided he was going to do How a barrel roll. How mad would you be if the, if, the, if the plane we were on barrel rolled? If the, <laughs> <laughs> the pilot decided. To <laughs> 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 you fucking up! Bro, that would be like the like if you're a pilot and you know you were retiring or yeah. something, they're quitting. Yeah. That. Last day. Yeah, last day. All right, month. everybody. We. Do you guys remember the worst the worst flight of my life? Do you guys remember that flight we were up, on? Up in Washington. The worst. Worst. Yeah. It was Spokane to Seattle, I believe. It was. I can't. I. I I'm not going to do it justice. People, this is true. I was. There scared. were people were crying on the plane. Yeah. And praying. There were women. Oh, that's the worst, sobbing. That was the worst turbulence I ever been. In. Oh, if I didn't have my seat, if you didn't have your seatbelt on, yeah. you were going to hit you're the ceiling. Launched. Mm -hmm. That's how hard it was shaking yeah. and going up. With a, like you'd, down. you'd be shaking like this, and then you'd have that little drop. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I was pretending to chill. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah this is normal. No, <laughs> no way, dude. I had, I had, I had uh, like those those binaural beats on my in my ear. And I had my <laughs> arms crossed hella tight like this. And I was just, oh man, I was just So that you know the, the funny part oh, yeah, about that crazy. is that the and I remember the the reason why I can relax somewhat in those situations, even though I'm agreeing. Not with that you. one. Not All that one. It was still right hard. Right but I, I remember uh I had this uh client that was a stewardess, and she said that that is like she goes, Adam, when you feel turbulence in the plane, that's like equivalent to you driving in a grocery store parking lot and going over speed, the bump. speed bumps. Yeah. That's literally what it's equivalent. That's how safe and okay mm -hmm. it's gonna be. Now here's yeah. the difference. The landing and takeoff you're, you're, are the two. If you hit yeah, the speed bump, the... you can't you don't accidentally hit, fall out of the car. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> as long as the engines are still running, dude, then I'm okay. But that that's what I mean, they that's how they equate that to like as far as how how safe or risky. One of the scariest uh Twilight Zone episodes has to do with the plane. Have you guys ever seen that one? Oh yeah, that weird creature that was like eating the You ever uh, watch the original one? Or did you watch the old the one? Yeah, in the, yeah, 80s the original one, dude. Yeah, dude. There's a guy Freaky. on the plane and he's freaking out and he's getting anxiety attack. They give him anxiety pills. He's still freaking out, and he looks out in the wing, and he's like, "There's something on the on the wing." Nobody, Nobody else sees him. it. Just this guy. Nobody believes him. Nobody believes him. And every time they look, there's nothing. Every time he looks, there's this creature on there. There's one scene that gave me nightmares as a child because he finally freaks out and he opens the whatever that is a the screen, hatch. and the monster's face, face is, in the is window. right there. So it's like yeah, he's like way out in the distance. You kind of see him, but then like that was the jump scare. You know, that was oh, like the bro. first jump. I was scare. I think it was nine or ten when I saw that. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. This is yeah. why my That'll wife freaked me out. My wife is like, she, she's she's like, it's creepy watching anything scary with you because you don't react. You sit there like nothing's happening. I think it's because I conditioned myself with that shit when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm crazy sure. stuff. I'm Speaking sure. of, uh, we're talking about uh, Legion for a second. Uh, they're multivitamin. We never talk about their multivitamin. That's a good product for people who want to fill in nutrient deficiencies. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is there's studies now coming out showing that with good controls, that multivitamin use is associated with longevity. Hmm. So people do live better and longer by taking a multivitamin. I mean, do you think that people just, ask me all the time, where should I get? I mean, don't do you think that's just because most people? I can't remember when I read this. Most uh, people are deficient. Yeah, that's they, right. they miss their yeah yes. their micronutrients, right? Yes. Like the, I think it's just like exercise and the type of food. There's a whole like, host I, of. Uh, I factors remember that. reading one time, and uh, you can correct me if you're wrong. If you don't remember this, Sal or not, but I th I thought like. To get the person's average uh, RDA and all the macro micronutrients, they on average would have to eat like three thousand calories and a serving of liver, yeah, or something yeah. like that. It was like a like a. It weird, was an amount that people don't. It was an amount and a like an odd thing. That it was an it was an amount that would make people obese because that's the how you would get the nutrients. They have to travel with these foods, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, so too, our, our soil isn't as rich as it used to yeah. be, you know, especially in minerals. So yeah. mi just consuming minerals Here, is really important. Here's the thing. It's like exercise. Exercise isn't magic. It's just that we move so little that some exercise makes us so much healthier. That's all it is. We're supposed to move. Yeah. It's not that multivitamins have any magic compounds in them. These are just, you know, vitamins and minerals. It's that a lot of us, not all of us, but a lot of us have some suboptimal levels of certain nutrients. And some of us, another smaller subset, have actual deficiencies. And deficiencies in, in vitamins and minerals cause severe dysfunction in the body. And they can cause lots of symptoms that people don't associate with nutrient deficiencies. So they'll have like anxiety or, or stiffness and pain. That was my dad. My dad thought, because he's got arthritis up and down his spine and he, you know, he's worked hard labor. He was like hurting all over the place. And he kept telling me, oh, old, getting old sucks and this sucks. And I'm, I'm helping him with mobility and stretching, but he would always complain about it. He goes and gets a, a vitamin te uh, a nutrient test. His vitamin D is low. Mm -hmm. Starts taking vitamin D, Oof. the pain, gone. Yeah. 
Within a week, it was gone. So nutrient deficiencies. Is are, there? Do you see? I mean, is is there an example of where you would take a multivitamin? I mean, you're pretty balanced the way you eat everything like that. You supplement for a lot of things already. I take vitamin D three because every time I get tested, yeah, but that's I'm, a that's a by itself. You take that. I take it by itself. So I do take I. magnesium. Yeah, so do I. Um, I do take a multivitamin. I would say probably six months out of the year, maybe at the least four months out of the year. Definitely during the winter months. I take a multivitamin. Oh, interesting. For sure. Yeah. So what? Because there's more holidays, more eating, not as good. Mm. So I tend to take multivitamins based off of what my, I know my diet is looking like and how much sunlight I'm getting and stuff like that. Now, I'm actually glad you brought this up because I get, I, I forget that Mike even has a multi, he's got actually a, a good line of like, I know he's got a vitamin D also. He's in got there. fish oil. Yeah. yeah so he, a lot of products. Yeah, no, he does. And, and people ask me like, what brand do I recommend for some of that? And I forget that he's got a multivitamin and you know how he is with everything so like i know that's it's legit what, yeah. he's, what he's putting oh no out. he he goes through crazy length we know the owner of legion very well and he legitimately goes through crazy lengths to ensure quality yeah. in a supplement efficacious doses and yeah. i cannot say that for most of the companies so. yeah. no. all right shout out okay i know we did a uh, comedian just recently but like I've been sort of on this campaign of trying to promote, like, maybe just a little bit of bullying back. <laughs> God. And Justin. I just don't know how to articulate it, you oh, know, in a I way that's that. not going to offend everybody. I saw that, dude. And maybe this guy, he's not for everybody, you know, it's, it's, it's a little out there if you're sensitive, but hilarious, hilarious uh, bits. And uh, his name's Jeff Zinisek. And he does this whole thing where it, he kind of justifies it in a really funny way. If you have children, you probably care a lot about them and you want to make sure they get the right nutrients. You want them to get adequate nutrients. Well, there's a multivitamin for children that we support. We don't support any other multivitamin for kids because most of them are candy, essentially, but not Haya. Haya is not a gummy candy. It's got the right amount of nutrients for little kids. Go check them out. Go to HayaHealth.com. That's H-I-Y-A Health.com forward slash Mind Pump. And through that link, you'll get 50% off your first order. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Linda from Massachusetts. Hi, Linda. How can we help you? Hi, guys. How you doing? Hey, Linda. Thanks for taking my question. Yeah. Um, as I said in my email, I've been listening to podcasts forever and a day. I'm not even sure how I found you guys, but you were on all my favorites. And... Um, you all, including Doug, bring so much to the table, but I have a special affinity with Sal because I'm Italian, uh, and right. uh, and I um I was a weight loss counselor for 20 years, so if I had a doll for every time I I said I have this study or <laughs> use an analogy to make a point, I'd be retired by now. Wow. But uh, <laughs> so a uh, little history: I grew up in the 70s, so I was always outside, active, moving. And um, when I was 17, a Nautilus gym opened up in my neighborhood, so I joined, and I loved it. And the only information I had back then was bodybuilding magazines, but they did the trick for sure. Uh, when I was 22, I uh, a coworker asked me to go for a run, so I asked my uh, then. Um, Workout partner, now husband, to go for a run, and we did our first road race in 87, and we've been racing ever since. But uh, over the years, I've pretty much stuck with two to three days of weight training and uh, three days of cardio, some acti other activity. And over the years, I've done all, all the things. We did a bodybuilding competition, bench press competition, marathons, triathlons, uh, CrossFit. I even taught jazzercise back in the day. Um, <laughs> so... Yeah, <laughs> I'm dating myself. Yeah. So fast forward to the pandemic, I was stuck in the house all by myself and uh, was uh, not happy about that. So when a gym opened up nearby, I joined and it was classes, but traditional um, weight training movements. And they had the sleds and all the toys. So it was very consistent, built muscle and stayed sane, as you know, exercise does. So this year I was turning 60 and I got 15 extra minutes to qualify for the Boston Marathon. Actually, the older you get, you get more time, which is a good thing. Mm. <laughs> so I, I worked with my running coach and um, I eventually joined a regular gym. And uh, But I'm a social butterfly, so I had to join a class. And I was going for a run and I, liked, I love to listen to you guys when I run. And of course, you got the question about classes. And I heard Sal say, you're not weight training, you're doing aerobics with weights. And I was like, okay, all right, stop that class, 
focus on the marathon. And I'm happy to say that I ran my marathon in September, qualified for Boston by yeah. 18 minutes. Wow. So it's nice, nice to have a, a cushion. Great job. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So um, my normal season, I live in New England, so it's preseason now, track starts in April, get into the heart of my season. Usually my A race is in the fall. And then I back off on the running and do a little bit more weight training. So as someone who wants, who's competitive, but also wants to keep it, my muscle being 60, what MAPS programs would you recommend for the different times in my season? Oh, great question. By the way, you been, you were lifting weights it, it, <laughs> when, when women didn't lift weights. What was that like? If you don't mind me asking, so you were probably the only one in there. So first of all, every time you, you, you guys talk about that and I get very excited when you encourage a woman, any age to lift weights. And I have to tell you, um, I don't know if it's cause I'm from the Boston area, but, um, there were women, it wasn't a lot, but there were, and I had like a really good core group of, of friends and, you know, I joined, a, a. we went to goals. I mean, we had been to different and I'm still married 33 years. So Good place to find my husband was the gym. <laughs> um, there were the, the you know, rusty weights, but everybody was so nice. Everybody was so nice. I loved it. And, um, you know, even like the bench press competitions, the body, they were just all, the races. So I just always felt very comfortable. And, I, and I'm a social person, so I loved working out around That's people. Great. But everybody was great. That's great. It's nice now to see more people, more women in the gym. But so, so I got to say- great. I got to say this first before I, I give you advice, Linda. So someone like you, which I, 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 you know, I've met people like you, but it's not common. Most people don't have the history of uh, exercise like you do. Haven't done it as consistently through the years. You've probably really developed um, good relationships with exercise. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to do it as long as you have, you know, so advising you almost feels silly to me because you probably know yourself better than I do. But I will say this, the one thing that I've, I've always encountered with people like yourself, and I put myself in this category, is the thing to look out for is to not overdo it. Because you enjoy it so much, you're probably always kind of dancing that line of doing enough and maybe doing a little too much. So I would be, that's the thing I would pay attention to. Now, the more that you're running, the less you should be strength training because you can't tolerate doing a lot of either, okay? I think the MAPS Anabolic is a great off-season program. I think MAPS Symmetry is a great off-season program. Symmetry is probably going to give you the best balance. Even 15 yeah. for someone who's doing this much cardio. And too. then, yeah, in the in in the meantime, if you're doing any strength training while training hard for something like a Boston Marathon, MAPS 15 would be an appropriate type of strength training program during that period of time. But really, the strength training, you, you know, you think of it like- It's like, complimentary. It's, yeah, it's going to be- com and, and, and if you do more running, you got to do- You can't do all of it. Otherwise, you'll really set yourself up for injury. And training for- First off, to qualify for a Boston Marathon, people are like, it's a tough thing to do. Um, I know that- I don't know. What was the time that you had to get? Because I know when, when uh, I trained somebody, but they were not in your age group. They had to get under three hours, I think it was, or less. What's your? What was your? What was the time for you? So, um, and it is, a, so men, it's a 30 minutes more. So if it was a guy that's not uncommon, it's usually around three hours, but for my age, it was a 420 and I did a 401, Good for you. um, but I've, I've run it qualified every, I, this would, I've done it five times and this will next, my time will qualify me for 25. But, um, I didn't even know what qualified meant when I did my first one, I got an invitational number for my, for my running club. Um, and that was 1998. And when I finished, somebody said you qualified. And I was like, what does that even mean? So yeah. now that's a big goal for anybody who can do it. <laughs> um, but I thought that was reasonable. I did my last one in 2010 and I'm like, never again. I've done <laughs> other marathons, but, and then I just, when I hit 60, I'm like, well, maybe I can do it again. And so I was really it's happy. A, I'll a, get another it's chance a big deal. I, so what I would, when I, when I used to train uh, people that would run marathons after their competition, I would always have them take a minimum of two to three weeks off. And in fact, studies will show the damage lasts can last as long as four to six weeks. So I'd have them take about two to three weeks off. I would have them feed their bodies appropriately, rest, allow things to heal, allow the inflammation to kind of go down. Cause you, you know, you know, you probably feel like you got hit by a truck, you know, for days afterwards. 
And then when they'd come back to working out, we would start very slowly. But then eventually the routine would look a lot like a MAPS anabolic type of routine. It's a very good basic strength training muscle building program. Now, the reason why I also mentioned MAPS symmetry is because that's going to give you the most carryover to all the other things that you do because uh, it trains. There's a lot of unilateral work in it. And that's going to benefit yeah. all the other activities that you like to do because you're so multifaceted. You're not just doing this to look good. You love to perform. The other program that would work well is MAPS Performance. Those three programs would be your core programs. Anabolic, Symmetry, and Performance would be the best ones for you. And then during training time, when you're doing other types of things, MAPS 15 would be a great way to kind of maintain or help maintain yeah. strength. I love MAPS Symmetry just as a diagnostic, right? So it's, you go through that, like especially if you're a competitor or you run a lot and – uh, you're just naturally going to kind of build some imbalances along the way uh, that uh, you can highlight and address uh, with that program and strengthen, and especially like around the joints to, to keep them healthy because, you know, you're such an active person, want to keep going and pursuing whatever you want to pursue uh, to to reinforce, you know, your the the stability and strength around your joints is, I think it's always something to consider. 100%. Do you, do you have any of the programs I mentioned? Do you have any of those? So, yeah, I did. So when I heard that, I did get um, anabolic um, and I got prime and anywhere like over time and I've done none of them. So uh, (laughs) the reason why I like the programs is because I've been lifting weights for so long. I tend to go in the gym and depending on my mindset or how busy I am at work, I'll like I know what to do. So I'll just do push, pull squats, you know, and I was like, I need a program for the winter to 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 dive into and really focus on. Um, so I thought that anabolic, which I have would be a good start. And I, I, I read it. I like the trigger sessions and I'm at that point where I'm ready to, to start, you know, okay. getting in, going back to the gym with a plan instead of just going in and well, doing the stuff. I'm going to send you, so send you that's symmetry. Why I like the plans. You know, you reminded, I mean, you just really reminded me of your experience in the gym. I'm going to send you symmetry. I think that one's going to give you the Thank best. You. I think that's going to give you the best results because it's probably going to be the most different from anything you've done. Uh, so I'm going to send you symmetry. And when you're ready, that's the one to start. Follow it as we wrote it out. And I think you'll really enjoy what it does to your body and what it does to your performance. Yeah. Well, that that's, you know, I always, whatever other exercise I did, it was always how did it affect my performance. And I have to say that 100% my longevity has been to weight training. Because yeah. you can imagine a lot of my contemporaries, I have a lot of friends that have been running for a long time, and both me and my husband and triathletes. And because they don't do weight training, they just never did. They are just falling apart. Yep, and yep. a lot of triathletes stop doing the run part because they can't run. And I'm like, oh, shoot me when I can't run, when that day comes. <laughs> but so far, you know, that's why. I, and I always have stuck to three days a week. Four doesn't work for me. Even training for a marathon, three is perfect. And then doing the weight training. Um, and I think I put in my email, I always find a good PT. And this one was really great because he had me doing all the balance, the bands, the oh, good, side oh, movements good, good. that really kept me strong. So that was so that was good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to to doing something new, especially in the dark and cold winter here in, in the Boston area. Mm. And then the other quick question I had was about reverse dieting. So um I went on my first diet at 13. Uh, luckily, Atkins was was all the rage, and I just always found that higher protein works great for me. Um, even when I trained for my first marathon, high carbs um, just wasn't didn't didn't feel good. But eat, I'm a small person. I'm about 120 pounds. I'm five one. So if I have 120 grams of protein, I, I tend to like fat more than carbs. So 50 to 60 grams of fat, and then it's really hard for me to get even like 150 grams of of carbs with three meals and some carbs. So, I mean, I don't know what you think I should be at, like say in this part of my training, like calorie, why should I try to reverse diet? When you're done with your race, I would, I would go, what are your calories? It says here calories around 1700. Is that true? Yeah. Like six, you know, depends on if I'm really focused, it might end up being a little less because I, when I'm really thinking about it, I won't have the handful of nuts or all that. Um, but yeah, I would say that would be accurate. I'd go I after track. your race, I would go up about, uh, to be, try and be consistent at 1800 calories and then work it up to about 2000 calories while doing map symmetry. And you're just going to get good. strong. From and it. your, and your ratio to fat and carbs is fine. You're especially fine. if you know, you feel good on that. That's right. Uh, you know, yeah. you're hitting your protein intake, which would be the number one priority. And then really 
the ratio of carbs or fat, I I change that based on the client. That's I mean, it. If they tell if you me feel good, you're doing. Yeah, it. they tell yeah. me I just feel better on higher fat and you know moderate to low carb. Then that's what we run. If they say they feel better on higher carb, then I run that in a little bit lower fat. So if you like the way you feel, just keep those ratios the same, and then just bump the calories a couple hundred calories. That's it. Yeah, I I I tr- I learned to trust myself, and honestly, even if I gained a little as I'm. I'm I'm covered in sweaters now here. Um, But I also just wanted to say, I love listening to you guys because as I said, I've been listening to podcasts, fitness podcasts for a long time. And now when I listen to them, I'm like, know that, heard that, that's the latest craze. And and I just enjoy your conversations. And I, and I, I love hearing you encourage other people because I really have a hard time watching everybody around me and I work in the software industry. So <laughs> they're just so unhealthy. So when I see you hear somebody and just, it's really fresh the way you talk and you talk about all contemporary things. So I know that your success is because you stuck to what you feel is important, but I just want to say you're doing a great job and I, I, I really enjoy listening to you. So keep it up. Thank I love you, it. Linda. Wish Thank I you. could hug you right huge, now. Thank you so much. Compliment. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Have a nice Have day. Have a good one. Yeah. Thanks again. I want, to, I want to point something out real quick to people listening right now. Okay. She's she qualified. Goal. She qualified for the Boston Marathon. She runs three days a week. She eats 150 grams carbs a day. That right there flies in the face of the belief that you got to run every day, beat the shit out of yourself and all that other stuff. Right. In, in fact, most people overtrain when training for she's also she's the her body. She, she's also the goal, right? Like, I mean, she's 60 years old. She's weight training. And by the way, I know a lot of people think that we're so hard on or anti-cardio or anti-running so much. She's a great example of someone that I'd love to see doing that. Yeah, totally. She has a love and passion for it. She recognizes the benefits of strengthening. And she highlighted exactly why we come off anti-cardio. It's because so many people do neglect the strength training Mm -hmm. and they just, they run themselves to pain to where they can't even run or exercise. It's a tool of abuse. It is. And so, and most people unfortunately fall in that category. She's the, she's rare. And I, I, one thing I want to add to training to support her running someone like her. I almost would I mean, we could have gone longer because I was going to ask her questions when people have been doing it as long as she has, there's a lot of stuff I wanted to ask her about her experience, what she learned and what she figured out. Cause you could tell she's, she figured this out through the years on what works for her body. Mm. And I would, I mean, and she's got a lot of training wisdom that she's developed over the years and that's where everybody can get. If you stay consistent and you do it for the right reasons, you can get there. Next caller is Dina from Iowa. Hi Dina. Hey Dina. How can we help you? Hey, it's my guys. Y'all make a girl giddy. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I'm a long time listener. So big fan. So I'm just stoked to chat with you. Awesome. Okay. Cool. So what's your question? How can we help you? So my question is, um, and I've been listening to you forever, so I almost already know what you're going to say, but (laughs) what would be more the optimal range body fat percentage wise? Is there like a minimum for women to, I'm I'm in the muscle building phase. I've upped my calories. I've dropped cardio. I've gone through your bundle um, twice through the anabolic performance aesthetic. I've gone through it twice through haven't gained a ton of muscle. And then when I start to up my calories, I feel like it's partitioned more towards fat gain than muscle gain. So I'm wondering if I need to embrace that fat gain before my muscle kicks in. I'm not sure. Yeah. Can I fill in a little context? I'm looking at your email. Absolutely. So it says here, um, your body fat percentage as per DEXA was 15.2. Um, and then it went up to 15.8, basically the same. It hasn't changed. Yes. And your question is what's a, what's a good body fat percentage to gain muscle? Okay. Yes. Okay. So there's a range there, but essentially you want enough body fat to be able to support your hormones and to at least support optimal health or not make your body, uh, or put your body in a stress kind of a state for a woman. 15% is almost always too low. Okay. There are rare exceptions, but it's probably definitely too low. And you're finding with a small bump in calories, your body fat going up, it's because your body needs it. Now, one way to gauge this for women is based off their cycle, but this isn't always reliable because so many women now take birth control and whatever. But if you find you lose your period or it becomes irregular, if your libido's off, you notice differences in your hair, in your skin, in your nails, 
then you probably need to bump your calories and get your body fat percentage up. In my experience, good body fat percentage that's lean in the female clients that I've trained to get them to build muscle was always at least, at the least in the high teens. 17 to 19. Yeah, like 18, 19% body fat, typically low 20s. And that's when they were healthy, they felt good, and they were going up. I'm also looking at your macro breakdown. And your protein is 120 grams. That's fine because your body weight's pretty low. Fats need your to come fat up. is really low. Fats got to come up. Yeah. yeah, that's where you need to bump. Your fat's at 35 to 40 grams. You're probably barely hitting what you need for fat. I would bump your cat your fat at least up to 60, 70 grams, just to get what your body needs because fat's essential. And that would give you the mm -hmm. extra calories that we should be yeah. eating right now too. Yeah, yeah no, I, I mean, the the audience that can't see and stuff like that, I mean, I, I think I can see your bicep vein through your shirt. You're ripped. I mean, you're plenty, you're plenty, you're plenty lean right now and absolutely could use a couple percent body fat and you will build muscle, I promise. And I, I'm sure if you've been listening for a long time, you've probably heard me talk about the psychological part of increasing yeah. the calories and what's really going on with the water retention and everything like that. And I know what a mind fuck that is. And it's, and it's exactly, that's what it is. You're not getting fatter. It's more of a mind fuck of you are least used to probably being someone who was damn fit, shredded, lean all the time. And the first time you're kind of reversing out and adding and that first initial, you know, water retention and weight that comes on doesn't look the same way as what you guys should. And it messes with your yeah. head more than what's really don't, going on. Don't throw your scale away while you do it. If you were my client, okay, my goal would of course be to build muscle and strength, but I'd also want you to gain body fat. If I, if I bumped, let me put it this way. If you were my client and I bumped your calories and you were gaining muscle and not gaining body fat, I would bump your calories again because 15% uh, for a woman to stay at is typically too low. Typically, again, there's there's exceptions, but it's typically too low. And I want you to pay attention to how you feel because what you'll probably notice is better sleep, less stress, better libido, better energy, and you're probably going to get compliments from people around you, where people are going to say, "Well, you look really good. Well, you look really healthy." We've been we've been led to believe that body fat is all bad. Any body fat is bad. That's not true. There's there's lot too much body fat. There's also too little body fat. Both are unhealthy. In fact, too little body fat in the data can be worse than too much body fat. I don't think that's the case with you because you're also exercising and you're probably eating healthy food. But if you look at the data, uh, on you compare two sedentary women who aren't exercising, one sits at 12 to 15% body fat, the other one sits at 30 to 33% body fat, you're probably going to see worse health outcomes with the leaner person. I think if you trust us, trust the process throughout the scale and the mirror. I don't know. I'm not letting you look. I'm not letting you. I don't study yourself. I'm not letting you take pictures and analyze yourself. I'm not letting you. None of that stuff. It's like we're focusing on increasing the calories, getting strong in the gym, getting you to trust me and trust the process. And then what I would promise you is that I'm going to let you gain a little bit of body fat percentage, but I'm, I'm going to make you happier. You're going to look better, feel better. You'll be stronger. You'll also have more metabolic flexibility, so you'll be able to enjoy more foods, whatever it is that you like to do occasionally that's outside of the diet. You're going to get more of that and be looking and feeling better at the same time, but you got to get over the the first that first mental hurdle of this is body fat that's coming on you. It's not. It's not body fat. You're holding on to a little bit of water from the extra carbohydrates or calories or whatever that. You're going to be fine. Trust the process. Totally. Totally. And you knew we were going to say knew, that. I knew you would say that. And so <laughs> I knew this would happen. But I, I also wonder if I need to throw away the genes too because that's the other mind play, you know. I'm not obsessed, but I just love to be lean. And so yeah. it's hard to see that go. But I, I, I think, Dina, I'm going to help you, okay? I don't think you love to be lean. I think you think you love to be lean. I think you're afraid of gaining anything. And so you're you're in this kind of state of fear, okay? And I know this. I've, I've, I know what this feels like. When you get out of it, the further you get out of it, the more clear it's going to be. And you're going to look back and be like, holy cow, man. I, I thought I liked that but I, I didn't feel good. It wasn't great. This feels way better. So, and really pay attention to the signs that your body's telling you as you go through this process, because the signs are going to tell you you're moving in the right direction. The scale and the mirror are lying to you, or at least they're telling you 
or they're feeding your fears. I wouldn't use those. Like Adam said, you you can use the mirror, but don't study yourself. You, so if you stand in the mirror and look at yourself and like, oh, how use am I either your oldest kid or your your partner. Let them be the ones to help you. Got be trust them that who love you. Okay, if they're your if they're your partner or you're your child, unless like, they're I'm, in the same boat. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I've seen ah! couples like yeah, that before. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, more likely than not, uh, your partner will probably tell you that you're doing you're doing good and be honest with you. So I, I would I would if I'm going to lean on any advice from somebody else, uh, opinion wise, I'm not I'm not going to trust my own where you're at yeah. currently right now. I'm not going to trust what I think when I get on the scale or look at myself in the mirror. I'd prefer to hear it probably from my, my partner. 100%. Dina, have you ever have you ever had, uh, if you don't mind me asking, have you ever had dysfunctional eating patterns? Yes. Or, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, years ago, I'm out of that. I'm fine. Wonderful relationship with food now. I just, and I practiced intermittent fasting for seven, eight years, and I just stopped that. I'm like, that's ridiculous. It's not serving me at all. So I don't do that. And I bumped my calories tremendously, but- Still afraid to kind of go up to the, I'd like to stay in the teens <laughs> for body fat percentage. Yeah. You, you can, I, you if, can. 17 to nine. So all of my female trainers that looked amazing, okay, you're around, they, they hovered around 17 on the low end to 19%. Yeah. I'd like to that see you like, closer to 19. I yeah. think that, I think that, we, that you'll do. Look, I'm going to tell you something right now. If what we're saying sounds frightening to you, you're still in the grips of what you dealt with years ago. It's just less. It's still no, there. You guys have changed my mind a little for sure. And I'm getting stronger. I can finally do a single pull up for the first time in my life. So I awesome. know I'm getting stronger. I do trust y'all. Okay, good. I good. actually, I would actually want to, to your point about the 19%. So I was like, I actually would not allow you to cut calories until we at no. least, least get to there. Yes. So that would be my, yes. if you were my client and you were kind of fighting with me, because this is normal, fighting with a client in this situation where, where she's telling me, Adam, I'm getting fatter. My jeans aren't fitting. This is, I don't like this. And then I'd be like, just trust me. Just trust me. I'm not going to let you go too far. And we can always get it right back. I promise. Just let, I would, I would be pushing you like that at least until you got to 19 before I allowed you to even come back the other direction, just so I could show you how you feel and, and, and look and everything and be objective about it at that point. He, uh, that's what I would make you do first. Now here's the other part here that I just, I'm looking at your email. So you're a yoga instructor. So you're teaching, how many classes do you teach a week? Oh, uh, five, six. What kind of yoga do you teach? All of it, like the hot sequence, kind of power, restorative. Okay. I do all so you I do, love it. You do that, plus you run 12 miles a week, plus you strength train. I've stopped, I've stopped running, and now I just do sprints on my leg day, and I'm in the gym five days a week. Okay. I want I, I want you to strength train full body three days a week, MAPS Anabolic, if you can. I've I, done that. <laughs> I, I want you to do that while doing what we're talking about. I don't want, yeah, the, and even the sprinting, I would kind of – Cut that down a little bit. Stick to the walking. And I think that would be the perfect complement to what we're talking about. And what I would like to do, Dina, is I'd like to invite you back in 60 days to come back on I the wanna, show. I want you in the forum, too, so yeah. we can be- We're going to put you in the forum, yeah. and I want to invite yeah. you- in, And now, here's why, okay? I'm going to drag you kicking and screaming I'm putting to. you on air, and I'm say, I'm asking you to come back in 60 days because I want to hold you accountable. Can we do this? Can you, can you come back in 60 days, come on the show, and report back? Yeah, I would be honored. Done deal. Okay. Done deal. Boom. Okay. Yeah. There you go. And do you have MAPS Anabolic? That's the one I want you to follow. I have Anabolic Performance and Aesthetic. Okay, okay. good. Follow MAPS Anabolic while doing this. And then Doug's going to put you in the forum too, so <clears throat> we can we can okay. keep an eye on you and make sure you check in with us, okay? Yep. And we'll see you in 60 okay. days, okay? Oh, I'm going to hold you to it. And I've been a fan of yours, even though y'all hated on Tony Horton. I think you made fun of him one Maybe. time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank Thanks you, so Dina. much for having me. Thank right. you so much. Bye. Right. Bye. Uh yeah, she knew the answer to all that. Man, if she does listen, if she's listening, you do what we say, it's yeah. gonna blow your mind. Yeah. And the further you get out of it, I know because I get into shit myself. I get in these these cycles of dysfunctional bullshit. Then when I come out of it, I look back and like, oh my God, what was happening? I mean, if she just trusts us and she get, let, allows herself to go to 19% body fat, I guarantee the way she feels, how strong she is, and the amount of compliments she gets yeah. should be to enough. The roof. I think yeah. it's in there. I think she knows like intuitively that's the direction. She, totally. She, wants, she just wants to get that reinforced you 100%. Know, from somebody else. Our next caller is Veronica from California. Veronica, what's happening? 
How can we help you? Hello. I'm super, super excited to be here. This is this feels so surreal. <laughs> um, and before I get into my question, I have to give a shout out to my friend Grayson, who introduced me to you guys because he had heard me talk about nutrition and give some presentations. And we spent a lot of time together traveling in Bulgaria this summer talking about nutrition and fitness. And he was like, Veronica, you listen to Mind Pump, right? Because like everything you say sounds so similar to what they do. And I was like, no, I don't. Like, I mean, I've heard them. I've heard Sal talk on like uh, Max Zuckerberg's podcast, but I don't listen. And so I said, send me an episode that you think I'd like and I'll take a listen. And he sent me the one, um, Why Women Should Bulk. And I've been hooked since then. So I spend a lot of my day with you guys. So I'm really excited to Thank be you. here. Thank you. Very Thanks cool. to my awesome. friend, Grayson. Thank yeah. you. Good friend there. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So I will jump straight into my question and I'll um, read through my email because I was reviewing it and it seems pretty succinct and I can go on a lot of tangents. So I'll just stick to my email. Um so here's my question. Genetically, I am very muscular. My body, my mom's and my grandpa's are all super similar and we have very large calves and quads. Um, and unfortunately, I've had so many people in my life comment on my body, especially on my legs, like um, from a really, really early age that it flung me into years of body dysmorphia. Um, strangers would literally stop me in the streets to comment on my body. And people always, always ask me if I was a gymnast. And to me, it just screamed that my body is so different and noteworthy for people to comment on it all the time. Um, and so I stopped trusting my judgment because I didn't know if it was body dysmorphia or if it was really that different that people just had to stop and say something. And it really didn't serve me well. Um, and people, for some reason, especially like to comment on my legs, which was really extremely inappropriate. And it made me terrified to train heavy. So I never skipped training leg day, but um, I always trained really lightly and never less than 15 reps because I had always gotten the message that like in order to avoid bulking, just train light and train for a lot of reps. So it was always like 25. And throughout the year, sometimes I'd try and figure out like, okay, well, how can I make my legs smaller? And so I'd read all these like female blogs about Pilates and none of it made sense. And I never actually tried to incorporate it because it was just kind of the very like fluffy female oriented workout advice. And I loved going to the gym since I was young. And so I was never going to stop. So none of it applied to me. Um, so since then, I mean, I've continued, I've been going to the gym since I was about 13. I'm 27 now. Um, and lately I've really enjoyed lifting heavy just to see like how strong I am and really start developing my strength. And so I started enjoying like that five to six rep range and I'd start, but then I'd get really scared to bulk up. Um, and I just feel so like disproportionate in my body that I'm not entirely sure how to train. And I have come like really, really far with my body dysmorphia. Um, and I know I can't completely change my stature and I'm in a really good place with, um, training and eating for my health and longevity. Thanks to people like, um, Dr. Lyon, who really preached like the benefits of health and fitness, especially in muscle growth for more than just like physique and weight loss, but really longevity. Um, so I feel really comfortable in my skin. I just don't want to further develop my lower body. And I want to say that because of this, because of what I've experienced, it's kind of, it's helped me, um, build out other parts of my life. So it caused me to focus on just how to have an interesting life and how to develop different skills and how to get curious about things because I just figured like, okay, well, I'm never going to have the ideal body type that we see in media. So like, why don't we focus on other things in your life? And so there have been a lot of like pluses and minuses with this, but I've definitely come a long way. So I'm open to any advice and any direction that you have for me. Yeah, I think you're doing the right thing. I think you're working on the right things to help yourself with this. You sent a picture of yourself 
uh, Veronica, and I don't know mm-hmm. if this makes a difference, but you're very proportional. So you don't okay. look disproportional. Um, uh, I think you're, you'd be totally fine training the whole body the way you've been training. But if mm-hmm. you feel like you want to target one area over another, it really is as simple as trading volume in your sessions, doing less volume for the lower body, more volume for the upper body, less volume for body parts that you feel already are really, really overdeveloped or developed and more volume on body parts that, uh, you know, you want to continue to further work on. Um, you know, one of the best gauges that I like to use for people like you where the body does, cause body dysmorphia is tricky. You, you can hear people tell you things all day long and mm-hmm. it doesn't really sink in. In fact, you said something earlier, people were complimenting you on your body since you were growing up and they, or they, at least they thought they were complimenting you. They probably say, wow, are you a gymnast? Do you work out? But that actually caused the reverse, right? It actually made you hyper-focus on your body. So mm-hmm. one, th- the, the, the best, I don't know, trick or hack that I would use for clients like you is I would get them to focus on their performance. So mm-hmm. I would look at strength. So I'd say, okay, is my deadlift well? Is the ratio of my deadlift to squat seem good? Am mm-hmm. I pressing really well? Can I do a pull-up? Can I do a, you know this many push-ups? And then use strength as a gauge of where you should place your focus. That's what I would, that's what I would employ, you know, really employ you to do is look at your strength and your performance and try to hyper-focus on that because the more you focus on the way you look, the more difficult it's going to be for you to really see a clear picture just based off of what you've, you know, what you've kind of told us. Um, go ahead. Yeah, no, I think, I think you look phenomenal right now, but I would still ask you because I'm in the business of helping someone sculpt their physique. And so is it your uh, your all your lower body that you feel that is already too big, or is it just your quads and less maybe the glutes or the hamstrings? Or how do you feel? Because there's certain things that we can do to modify the training. Let's say, for example, where you're like Adam, I'm just I feel really quad dominant, uh, but I don't mind if my butt got a little bit bigger, so I, I'm okay with that. So and my hamstrings. So do you have uh, do you feel that way about them, or is it just in general you just don't like them? Um, I, I have no issues with the glutes. I'll admit that. (laughs) Um, but like my quads, I definitely feel like they're, they are, they, that's what stands out to me most. Like when I see something, I definitely focus on kind of like that bulge of the, um, of the quads when you're looking at me from the side, Mm -hmm. like they just seem so apparent to me. Mm -hmm. And then from the front, when you look at my calves, they seem really large for me. So those are kind of like the two places that I generally focus on. And then I'm like, ah, okay, those are my least favorite areas, but that's okay. Whatever. We're focusing on different things. And so um, if I were to hyper fixate, those would be the two things that I kind of um, look at. Okay. So based on one, just hearing you say hyperfixate though, I'd want us to get away from like, cause that's, that's dipping back into our dysmorphia mm-hmm. type of like, so don't hyper focus on anything like that, but we can change and modify the programming to where I would l- eliminate like this, the squatting in there and we would do things like mm-hmm. hip thrust instead. So there's things. Mm-hmm. That, and then obviously I wouldn't have it, you doing any calf raises in maps anabolic. I would get rid of those. Right. So I would simply just uh, avoid the movements where you already feel like you're very calf dominant or quad dominant Mm -hmm. and keep the ones in there like your, you know, Romanian deadlifts, like your hip thrust. Veronica, your leg day can literally be uh, glute, hamstring, abductors, and then finish with like one quad exercise like squats where Mm -hmm. you're just keeping the mobility and the strength. You could totally do it that way and organizing your workout that way will help you, you you know, train your body and develop it in the way that you're looking. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. Everything else, I think, where your attitude, I mean, your mindset is 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 totally yeah. okay. And, and I think personally, we all think that you look great yeah. and very balanced. But I also understand that. Hey, listen, it, that's the cool part about right. uh, weight training is you yeah. can sculpt the physique well, and you can do little things like that. Have you actually gone through a phase where it was more like a powerlifting type of uh, program? Yeah, that, no, I, I haven't. Um, I haven't done that. Um, another like tricky part of my training routine is that I actually travel full time. Um, I travel all over the world. And so sometimes I'm in areas where I do have access to a gym and sometimes I don't. And so for the last two months, I've actually been, um, 
I have your Maps Anywhere program because sometimes I just have access to a rooftop and I train on a rooftop. So last two months, I've had no equipment. And right now, I'm actually in Morocco um, surfing in a small town called Tamaracht. And I actually do have um, access to like a super old school janky gym. And so sometimes I train in a gym, sometimes I train body weight. Um, but short answer is no, I've never done any kind of like power lifting. Okay. I like, do you have map suspension? That's a good program for you while you travel. Yeah. Um, I, yes, I actually do. I oh, actually good. Do. Well, there you go. Do you, you know, one day you're going to like the fact that you build muscle easily. I'm going to tell you, you're yeah. young. Yeah. And so right now you have a problem with it. As you get older, you're going to watch your friends get older and you're going to be yeah. really happy. You're going to have fun with it and realize that, that yeah. being strong is, is the move. And, and having muscle so protective, it's going to keep your hormones healthy. You're going to always look younger than your friends because that's what muscle does. So, and you will one day you'll, you'll, you'll end up enjoying it but i think really just modifying your workout and the way we said mm -hmm. is going to help yeah it's going to give you kind of what you're looking for by the way are you bulgarian is that why you were there for so long or, or is that because you're traveling no, okay. no no no. i was actually there for a conference every summer there's like a big um a meetup and festival for people who are digital nomads and travel full-time so i was actually um there giving a presentation on health and fitness so i got to speak at it and then I stayed because I really wanted to hike in the Pyrene Mountains because it's absolutely awesome. gorgeous over there. You got you got a cool yeah. life. I know. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, good stuff. Well, I have, what I was going to say is that I, I did really resonate with what you were saying about focusing on like the strength of my body because traveling full time has helped me realize like how strong I really am because I've gotten to use my body for really cool things all over the world. Like I summited and a 16,000 foot mountain in Bolivia. I've gone mountain biking in Bolivia. I've hiked all over the world. I'm surfing in Morocco. And the more of these experiences that I collect, I'm like, wow, I get to do really cool things that a lot of people don't have the strength for. And so this has given me a lot of just like reflection and really changed my perception because awesome. I'm so grateful to be able to do all these really cool things with my body. Veronica, do this. Perfect. Focus on performance. That's going to take mm -hmm. you away from the stuff that is harmful. So focus on perform how well you could do the hiking and the running and the surfing and the swimming and all those things. Focus on that. And then do not study your body in the mirror and do not study pictures of yourself. I mean, you, you, you said something earlier that I, and that's what you're doing is you're like, well, I don't like my quads when I look from the side, like when you look at your quads from the side, either you're studying yourself in the mirror or you're looking at a picture of yourself and you're focusing and literally finding all the, whatever you would consider imperfections. Don't do that. Cause that is going to drive you deeper into these dysfunctional kind of feelings and behaviors. Don't study yourself, focus on performance, by the way, the side mm -hmm. effect of which is going to be, you look so healthy and good. So that's going to be the most helpful thing that I can tell you. All right. Sounds good. That's simple enough. And I can definitely do those things. Thank you, Veronica. All right, Veronica. Awesome. Thanks for calling in. Bye. Bye-bye. What a cool uh, life. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go surfing cool. in Morocco. I know. I know. My how, brother lived like that. How, yeah. How funny is that though? She felt she was disproportionate. She's not. No. But it just, just, just yeah. goes to show you, man. A lot of it's in your mind. Totally, man. All of it. Well, especially, you know, when it, when it gets, uh, seated, as a kid. Oh, totally. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh as my God. Like, that was, I bet the 90, sucks, I bet 99, per, yeah, I was yeah. but 99% of they were it a good thing. was compliments. But at that, at a young age, you don't know all you were, and she said it just right, right? She receives that as I'm different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Something when you're young, be, you don't want to be different. Yeah. You want to fit in, you want to be this. Mm -hmm. And so then how you could take someone who's got a great physique. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of women that would be envious to have that lower body. Totally. You know what I'm saying? that are probably like angry right now listening <laughs> to yeah, like, how How dare she say She looks great. Yeah. 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 So, but I mean, that just shows you that how that can happen from, from childhood. And, uh, you know, your advice is right. I mean, I wanted to be able to give the advice of that's, what's cool about weight training is you can also sculpt. Yeah. But even when I asked she, the way she described her she in goes right into that, like imperfection, I was like, well, okay, well, this is, it was just driver into that. Yeah. Yeah. So. so maybe we don't go this direction. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you should just focus on the strength thing and not worry about sculpting. Look, if you're a trainer or coach and you love the podcast, go to mindpumptrainer.com. Check this out. I'm going to do a three part training series for trainers and coaches starting January 15th. Sign up before we run out of spots. Also, if you like this podcast and you want some free stuff, go to mindpumpfree.com 
and find some free guides for your fitness and health goals. 